So now we kind of move on to, I guess, the main event of this show, which is Wilder versus Fury 3. Or I guess Fury versus Wilder 3. I don't know why I keep saying Wilder first. I don't know. Maybe it's a it, hint. It, so- it sounds better. Wilder Fury sounds better than Fury Wilder, but it, it is Fury Wilder because he's the champion. You always got to put the champion's name in front of the contender, Fury Wilder 3. Yeah, and bit of a news uh, on Fury Wilder 3, uh, according to Kevin Ioli, who just tweeted uh, 40 seconds ago. So the broadcast team, I know you're going to love this, Robert. It's Brian Kenny, Lennox Lewis, or Lennox Lewis, and Andre Ward. That's not bad. That uh, of all the of all the possibilities with ESPN and Fox, I like Brian Kenny better than Kenny Albert. Uh, I like Brian Kenny better than Joe Tessitore because every punch. Oh, oh, what a jab! <laughs> now, yeah. now, I'm- uh, and Andre Ward is the best out of both uh, networks, color commentators, and. Lennox is going to let Andre do most of the talking. Lennox is not going to step on anybody's toes. And thank God it's not Joe Goosen, who I think is watching a different fight than the fight we watch at home. Because I don't know what the fuck he's talking about 90% of the time. What is he looking at? So considering the candidates, thank God Tim Bradley's not doing this fight because he's such a shill for a top rank and it would have been like, oh no. <laughs> you got you got Lennox is not biased towards anybody. Andre, very good color commentator who's not biased towards anybody. And Brian Kenny who will call it down the line and he won't be biased towards anybody. So, um, I um uh, that's the best three man team they could come up with. Now in my in in my opinion, to be honest with you, it should have been if they could have found a way, but he's he's training, so it couldn't have happened. Sean Porter, Andre Ward, and Brian Kenny. Because Sean Porter and Brian Kenny work so well together, but he's training to fight uh Terrence Crawford. I don't think that's a possibility. Now, I don't know if the international broadcast team is gonna be the same as the rematch, but the international English broadcast was uh, Ray Flores and Christina Poncher. Oh, and that's a great look. That's a much better. You know me, what? That's a much better. Broadcast. Well, you see, I'm watching this shit illegally, so I could get that stream. <laughs> and I could, and if I could find Flores and Christina, then I'm set because they have no bias. They know a left hook from a right cross. They know the game. They're they're students of the sport. So yeah, yeah. I, I, in fact, it's funny because when if you look back on on YouTube, the official uh, re-airing of the rematch, they go with the international feed. So you actually get to watch the fight with Christina and Ray calling it. Yeah, not which, which I yeah. don't even remember who called the the second the, the, rematch. the second fight. The second fight. The was. second fight was on Fox and ESPN, or was it Showtime and ESPN? What was that? The second fight, who, who handled the pay per view? Was it Showtime or Fox? I think it was both. Uh, no, I, I'm sorry, sorry. I think you meant uh, Fox and ESPN. No, that was Fox. Fox has been handling the entire Wild okay. Fury. Okay, all right, all right. Actually, no, 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 no. I think the first one. The Showtime. first one was Showtime. Yes, yes. First thing was Showtime. Second time Fox did, uh, handled it. Because I remember ABC. Morrow lost his fucking mind when Tyson Fury rose like the Undertaker. <laughs> he was having a he was having a he was having a WrestleMania flashback. <laughs> so Wild so Fury Wilder 3. I got to be honest with you. For a long time especially after in, in the in the 12 months after the second fight. I'd have said Fury's going to win the third fight. But now I'm not so sure anymore. There's a couple of things you have to consider now versus what I had to what I had available to look at in the spring of May uh, in the spring of 2020. Mark Breland, for better or worse, is no longer Deontay Wilder's trainer. It's Malik Scott. Wilder has had more than a year and a half. To process and get past the, the loss to Tyson Fury. Also, also, Carlos, 
to piggyback on what you just said, the physical damage he suffered at the hands of Tyson Fury, he has to have fully recovered by then. Go ahead, continue. I just wanted to add that. Go ahead, continue. That's no, that's that's another good point. Yeah, Fury is coming off a bout with COVID, and we've seen this time and time again. How many fighters in their first fight back coming out of COVID? How many? The perc- I don't know the percentage, but as far as the notable fighters, but but Carlos, it, real they quick, don't, Carlos, real quick, those guys you talk about were hospitalized. I believe if we were to believe that he actually had COVID, that it was non symptomatic. There's a huge difference. Yes, but there is, yes, but I think it, it, it's. I believe that I think it'll still be it, play some role, even as a mi- minuscule role, still. Because these other guys, Look, I mean, Povetkin was in a fucking hospital for two, three weeks. Mm-hmm. It's a, I, it's a huge difference. It, 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 he was asymptomatic, so I don't. If he had the COVID, and I don't believe he did, but th- that's my own personal belief. But go ahead, Carlos. I'm not going to interrupt you anymore. Go ahead, continue. No, it's, <laughs> but yeah, but the, the list of guys, whether it's asymptomatic or not, um, they have not performed up to a hundred uh, at a hundred percent in the first fights back coming out of the COVID. I mean, Jamel Herring, Alexander Povetkin, uh, Arthur better BF. Now with better BF, you could also argue that it was a long layoff and the number of injuries he's had, but the common denominator is that they all tested positive for COVID. And, you know, even still, I think that with, and I'm looking back and I'm looking back to the rematch and I watched the rematch yesterday one thing that stood out to me a lot was the fact that, you know, those first few rounds, Wilder had an incredibly lazy left jab. Like, he wasn't establishing anything with that. That jab was non-existent in the second fight. And we've seen this time and time again. When you set up the left jab and you have a strong right hand, that makes all the difference in the world. And Fury... Seeing how lazy that left jab was, he looked at that as as free real estate and just came in and attacked at will. Then Fury barely got touched in that rematch. And I think part of it is something that I would not be surprised if Mark Breland had something had addressed it to Wilder a long time ago. But because Wilder and Breland were never on the same page, then maybe Wilder didn't really want to listen to him. I don't know what Malik Scott has been telling uh, Deontay Wilder, but if that is something that Malik Scott brought to Wilder's attention, I can see a scenario where Wilder takes that to heart, takes that feedback, and works upon it. Now, obviously, it's entirely possible that Malik also doesn't believe that Wilder shouldn't work on the left jab. It's entirely possible. But if you look at the things that, you know, from a boxing standpoint, you look at Wilder and you think what we see is what we get out of him. But there are still some things you can work upon and you can improve the left jab. I mean, just don't throw it so haphazardly. Don't don't throw it half assed. That's not something that's an impossible task to improve in more than a year of working with Malik. So I think that there are a lot of things that I think if Malik really hunkered down and looked at Wilder and said, OK, you got to work on this because your left jab is not good. You just don't exactly know how to fight while moving back. We saw that in the second fight as well, that Wilder didn't really have an answer for whenever Fury took more than two steps forward and throw just about anything. I'm going to make my final prediction. And I will admit that one, this is going to, I'm almost making the exact same mistake as I did with my Anthony Joshua Alexander Usyk prediction. And two, my prediction is based on me having faith that Malik and Deontay Wilder fix a lot of what Deontay Wilder lacked, especially in the rematch. But I'm going to go with Deontay Wilder late stoppage. Even while they're at his worst, still has the right hand that can just knock out the Tyson Fury and just about anyone almost instantaneously. And 
it's not like Wilder needs to be a completely different fighter, be a fundamentally different boxer, because we, he, we've already known what he can and can't do. But even some of the stuff that he wasn't doing so well, I think part of it has to do with him and Mark Breland not exactly meshing well together. Malik and Deontay, they appear to be meshing a hell of a lot better. And so there are things that maybe Malik can say to Deontay that he's more open to talking and working on. So I think that given all of that, and I think I don't and I don't believe that Tyson Fury is going to is necessarily worried about being a significantly better fighter than he was in the rematch, because I think he believes that he's already figured out Deontay Wilder and that there's nothing that he can do that Fury hasn't seen from him or that Fury has to be exceptionally worried about uh, discounting the right hand. I think ultimately I can see a scenario. I, I see this as a late Deontay Wilder stoppage, but Fury's going to win the majority of the rounds. I love that prediction. I love that breakdown. And to piggyback on what you just said, I think it was a combination of both Wilder and Breland not being on the same page and Wilder falling in love with his right hand. Like a lot of great fighters have done. Same thing happened with Mike Tyson. The same thing happened with George Foreman. So when he came back 10 years later in 1987, he no longer relied on his one-punch knockout power. I saw it with Carlos Zarate. You see this all the time with great fighters who had great skill but fell in love with their one-punch knockout power and neglected those other skills. One thing Thomas Hearns never did. Hearns' his entire career, even when he was washed up, kept focusing on his left jab. But you got guys like Tyson, uh, Foreman Early, Carlos Zarate, and now Deontay Wilder, who, because they have such a great weapon, fall in love and only rely, uh, rely on that one weapon. Remember, Carlos, he lost to the majority of the rounds against Luis Ortiz in both fights. And it was yes. that one-punch knockout. Second fight, Wilder did nothing for six rounds before landing that atomic right hand. Ortiz was boxing his ass off. And in the first yes. fight with Fury, Fury was boxing his ass off except for those two knockdowns. He fell in love with that power. And also, I believe that, uh, he, like you said, he wasn't listening to Breland. Look at his first fight with Stavern. That jab was awesome that night, Carlos. And I was like, wow, Breland's got him mm -hmm. fighting like him. Like, he used to fight everything off the jab. But once Wilder started knocking everybody out with one shot as heavyweight champion, and the media uh, talking about, oh, he's the greatest puncher in boxing history. It got to his head, and he became lazy. He's not lazy if you watch the training footage, and he's hungry. And one thing about Deontay, he's always going to be hungry because he has his oldest daughter has severe physical uh, uh, ailments that he has to keep paying for, and he's she, she's uh, improved dramatically over since she was a baby. So he's always going to be hungry for that aspect. And plus, he was embarrassed in that second fight by Fury. Totally embarrassed to the point where he made observed allegations against Breland and Fury about cheating, glove tampering. The, 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 right then and there, I thought it was time for Wilder to retire. Because I thought he had done lost his fucking head or maybe CTE had taken over his brain. I don't know. This fight, he's determined, he's hungry, and his career is on the line. Because he loses to Fury, maybe outside of a fight with Joshua, it's a wrap for Deontay Wilder. It's a wrap for him. He's going to come in this fight, he's going to use that jab, and he's going to do the best he can, but I think it's going to be a little short. I'm gonna, he might even knock down Fury once or two times, one or two times. And it's going to be the best fight of the three because Wilder is going to bring everything to the table. His career's on the line. I see Fury winning a close 12 round decision where he will be in, where both fighters will be in trouble. It will be a fight of the year candidate. 
I hope you're right about the late uh, Wilder knockout because I'm I always root for Wilder because I love when a man Mitch Dream he, th- he was a he was a he was a basketball player or a football player I forgot in high school F- had, football player football player got had an injury and was driving a Coca Cola truck but still that wasn't enough to take care of his daughter and decided all right I'm going to take up boxing the man won a bronze medal I think he had less than a year of 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 real fight of, of amateur experience when he won an Olympic bronze medal how difficult is that. Right. And then he's had a tremendous professional career. And I don't give a damn what the critics say. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer with a lose Saturday night. So I always root for Wilder because of what he's done for his daughter. A lot of dudes. And I hate to say this, but it's true. A lot of dudes would have been like, damn, well, what, 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 baby, what you want me to do? I, I only make such and such amount. Uh. I don't know. Go to welfare. See what? Try to get Medicaid. No, he took it on his. He took it and he did whatever he could. And he's made millions. And you see the improvement of uh, of his daughter because 99 times out of 100, somebody like his daughter would not look the way she looks right now. I hope you're right. But man, uh, Fury is such a tricky fighter and he's going to find a way to rec- and he's got great recovery uh, 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 powers and I can't stand Fury. I think he's a piece of shit, but he wins by 12 round decision to hopefully set up a Usyk Fury uh, fight sometime next year. And by the way, uh, Carlos, imagine if Wilder does win. Imagine Wilder wins, Usyk beats Joshua in a rematch. That's your biggest fight of 2022, not anything else. Yeah, I, I would agree. I know some people don't like to admit that, but yeah, the that is true. Imagine yes, that fight. That fight will sell out a stadium in the United States. If they put that in the United States, that would be a tremendous, tremendous fight because you saw Usyk took those right hands from Joshua. I don't know if he could take those same type of right hands from Wilder. And while, so we'll see, man. I'm rooting for Wilder. My heart is with uh, my heart is with, with Wilder, but my mind tells me, Robert, you've seen this over and over again, and it's very hard in the history of boxing when a guy gets so totally dominant and beaten like that in the first fight that they come back and win the second fight. Historically, it's been very, very shaky. It's happened, but more often than not. Much, many more times than not, to say uh, the guys wins the fight, but it'll be a tougher fight. It's gonna be, it's gonna be very competitive. And Carlos, everything you said, you hit the nail on the head. He is hungry, and his him and Malik Scott are on the same page. And you will see an improved jab because in, in the first fight, uh, Carlos. Wilder was throwing a jab, and and Fury was respecting that. That's why Wilder, Fury stayed outside. You made the great point of once he saw Wilder wasn't even attempting the jab or just throwing it out there, he said, man, I'm coming right at him, and he beat the, the living hell out of him. And one thing, another thing to consider is that, I mean, the last four rounds of that fight, I'm talking from the fourth onwards, you know, Fury hit that right hook, to that busted basically busted up Wilder's right uh, left eardrum, and he was off balance for the entire fight. I we and also got to consider that not he, some Carlos. He had no legs after that, and he had well Wilder. Wilder's power comes from his long, skinny ass legs. If he doesn't have those legs for him to throw that right hand, he might as well be a uh, one man on Marquez fight Tyson Fury. There's no power there. Yeah, but 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 my overall but my overall point is that that's not a circumstance that you can reliably depend upon. To fight in and fight out. There's a minuscule chance right of Fury throws that same right hook with the same result of Wilder just completely being out of it for the remainder of the fight. So I do think that to a certain extent. Had that punch, had that punch not completely discombobulated Wilder, I do think we probably may have seen a more competitive fight. Yes, I mean, but by that point, by that point, Fury was dominating. He was still dominating even before that. But 
I do think that there while it would have been much more dangerous had that not happened. Yeah, because we've seen and even in that fight and we've seen Wilder in that fight and his first fight with Ortiz, Wilder has a tremendous chin. When he yeah, been, he was he was hurt. Some people were surprised that Wilder wasn't stopped in that first Ortiz fight. Well, Ortiz do Ortiz blew it because he started headhunting. Had he gone to the yeah. body, had he gone to the body, he would have knocked out Wilder. Wilder was on on death's door, a uh, death's doorknob. All right, and Ortiz was throwing. Ortiz got excited. I understand, but you know what, Lewis. You at the time of the fight, I think you were 54, 55 years old. You've been fighting for years. You know that when you get a guy hurt, you got to go to the body. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, shout out to Luis Ortiz. I want to see him in with another fighter. Please put him in with a. He's such a good fighter, but nobody fights this guy. Yeah, man. You know what? We got, what I would actually like to see. Ortiz up against next. I would actually like to see him go up against Joe Joyce. That would be a great fight. It'd be a great learning fight for Joyce because he'd have to outbox a a gifted boxer. Yes, that would be great. Ah, make that fight happen. O- Ortiz yeah. versus Andy Ruiz. I would like to see also. Yeah, I'd like to see that happen as well. Yeah. So we got the uh, so the undercard for this entire show. I know people like to complain oh, about before you before oh. you continue with the undercard. What time does the pay per view start? And matter of fact, you got you 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 got the floor. What are the 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 ESPN Fox undercard fights that are being shown on network television and the entire uh, pay per view? What time and what time approximately does the main event begin? Okay, so the pay per view. Itself is going to be on ESPN Plus uh, and Fox. So that is going to be, um, that's going to start at 9 p.m. Eastern. And the pay per view, I'm going to go basically from the top to the bottom. Uh, it goes like this it's going to be, you know, the pay per view card is Tyson Fury versus Deontay Wilder. Uh, Adam Kanowski versus Robert Hellenis. Uh, Jared Anderson versus. Uh, I'm trying to load it. I'm trying to load it. Uh, load up the, the card here. It's not loading up for some reason. Uh, Jared Anderson versus Vladimir Tereshkin. And F.A. Ajagba versus Frank Sanchez. Which I think it's not, a, it's not a bad quartet of fights. Hey, uh, Jared is getting his first. Uh, semi test. I wouldn't call it a real test. Uh, Jarrett, for all you guys that have been listening to our show since day one, both Carlos and I are very high on. We both believe he could be the future of the heavyweight division. Uh, that Ajagba Sanchez fight, very intriguing. Ajagba coming off his uh, knockout of the year contender in his last fight. And Frank Sanchez has been lazy. So, and both fighters have been lazy from time to time, so I'm hoping both fighters bring the best, bring out the best in 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 this fight. And um, Adam's career is on the line with this fight. Yes, yes. Robert Helen is a very dangerous fighter, and I think yeah, Kanowski needs to be better and more patient in the rematch than he was after dropping Robert Helen uh, in the first time around. His career is on the line because if he doesn't win this fight, then he's just a stepping stone. Matter of fact. I could he see gets the, a stepping stone with a, with an audience in Brooklyn. I so. could see the loser of that fight fighting Frank Sanchez, Jared Anderson, or uh, F.A. Very possible. Yeah. The prelim fights on TV, it's going to start at 7 p.m. Eastern, right. and they will air on ESPN2, ESPN Deportes, Fox Sports 1, Fox Deportes and simulcast on ESPN Plus. Only two fights on that portion of the card. Edgar Berlanga versus Marcelo Cosares and Julian Williams versus Vladimir Hernandez. I'm glad so for- I'm glad J Rock is back in the ring. And the reason they only have two fights is because they want to make sure that they don't bleed into the pay per view, right? Into the pay per view telecast. Yeah. Yeah. 
And because I mean, we both know these Fox fights. and ESPN love to talk in between fights. Like we want, <laughs> like we pay, like we're watching to hear Mark Kriegel and who uh. What was my, what, what, what's the dude that uh what's what's homeboy's name Keith Thurman we want to hear Keith Thurman and Mark Kriegel talk their nonsense for a half hour yeah right <laughs> it's an interesting test for Edgar Berlanga Marcelo Cosares is a in front of you don't remember he was the guy who really made it a competitive fight against Billy Joe Saunders on the undercard of one of the Paul brothers versus KSI. I can't remember which one. I think it was Logan. And Kosares, you know, it was a combination of Kosares being a lot better than what some people had anticipated on paper. And two, just Billy Joe Saunders just wetting the bed for 10 rounds before ultimately stopping Kosares. So Billy Joe didn't even show up that night. He acted like he had won the fight before the fight started, and he was surprised at how tough this this guy was. This guy's tough. This guy's tough. He'll give Belonga some rounds. Uh, which is the most important yeah, thing. Yeah, which is what which what Edgar needs. And it's a live body. It's the second fight in a row where he's fighting a real fighter. Julian Williams, Vladimir Hernandez. I know some people are just not high on this fight. but Yeah, but J-Rock hasn't fought in a long time, so he's got to get... And, yeah. and not just that. Not just that. We've seen... Throughout the throughout this past year, how f- these former 154 pound champions who took a long Jared Hurd. break, Jared, Jared Hurd Hur- is the perfect example. Tony Harrison as well didn't Tony do that Harris. well as Brian Perella. Yeah. The only it's- one that 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 came out looking great because they put him in with a zombie was Alara. Was that was that Lanty Lara? Yeah. Anybody else? Fuck. And that wasn't even 160 pounds. Uh, that was the. Uh, that was 160 pounds. That wasn't even 154. That was, and that you was, got a guy in I know, but he was the only one. He was the only one of these 154 pound champions that looked great in his return. Because uh, Hurd look, Hurd look, Hurd look washed up in that fight against Arius. I hope I'm wrong. And Vladimir Hernandez, even though he's only got 16 pro bouts. He's faced a couple of interesting names in recent years. He was Israel Madrima's very first pro opponent. He fought Suleiman Sissoko. And in his most recent fight, he actually scored a win over Alfredo Angulo. So it's not like this guy has but never seen is, a good uh, fighter in his uh, career. Uh, uh, Alfredo's done. Alfredo's done. Alfredo. Yeah, I mean, he is. But but, uh, but, but the point stands that is he's, her, her, his face, he's, 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 it's not like he's yeah, faced yeah. nobody his whole career. No, no, no. So, oh, you're right. So I think this will be a much closer fight than some people. I, I, also, I also being that he's coming off a huge layoff. I don't see a knockout right away. As a matter of fact, I don't even see a knockout. I see a J-Rock struggling to win a decision. By the time they step into the ring, it would have been, let me see, let me just count, 20 and a half months yep. since J-Rock's last fight, which was a fifth round TKO loss to Jason Rosario. Yep. 20 and a half months. Yep. That's that's not easy. That's not something that you can hold your hat on and think, okay, yeah, yeah, no, I, I fully believe that. And we it, can't, and we can't that blame Jillian it. Will win. We can't blame it totally on a pandemic because boxing reopened June of 2020 and he's stepping in the ring October of 2021. Right. Yeah. So this will be, uh, I think that it'll be both of those fights will be interesting. The early prelim bouts, they will be streaming only on the ESPN app and on the Fox Sports app. And it's going to start at 4.30 p.m. Eastern. These are the fights that have been announced for the early uh, prelims. It's going to be Robesi Ramirez versus Orlando Gonzalez, which I think is a fantastic fight. between. Man, that's a very young good prospects. fight. Wow. That's a really good fight. Uh Victor Faust versus Mike Marshall. You all, I believe. Now, here's the thing. The card, I'm looking at Box Rec, and it's a little bit different from what we had, uh, from from what was announced 
a couple of weeks ago. Originally, they were supposed to have Elvis Rodriguez versus Victor Bastigas, and there was no opponent announced for Bruce Carrington. On Box Rec, Bruce Carrington is now facing Cesar Cantu, and I'm not seeing anywhere a fight for Elvis Rodriguez, but I am seeing a fight featuring Rances Bartholomew uh, with no opponent announced. So, Rances is still fighting? That's another guy that uh, is a uh, a friend of the Insomniacs. <laughs> oh man, don't don't remind me of that fight against Robert Easter Jr. Oh, that was horrible. That, that was a horrendous fight. That was horrendous. What the worst one one of the worst fights I had seen in recent memory. Um, but yeah, but that is your card. Everything's starting at four thirty p.m. Eastern. At least that was what was announced on September twentieth. I. I Right around that ballpark, at the very least, if, even if there is a small change. So, overall, I think this is going to be a good card, top to bottom. I think it's a, I, I think it's one worth watching if you got an entire Saturday to yourself. Uh, unfortunately, I actually will not be watching the um, the early prelims because I'm going to be at a wedding. Um, and I will probably be back just in time, maybe for the Edgar Berlanga fight. Eh, onwards so uh but i'll definitely keep up i'll keep up with the early prelims uh, and, and the results and and the rest of the of the of the card and overall carlos is, carlos is going to be at the reception with his ipad out watching the prelims <laughs> uh, god i wish i had an ipad uh, that that worked these days i only got my iphone which i mean that's going to be good enough for me <laughs> I can I'm, see, I'm used to I, watching. I can see you sitting down at a table at the reception <laughs> watching the prelims. <laughs> hey, quick story. Yeah, I, on, oof, you know what? My that does sound a lot like me. My parents. Yeah. My parents were married September 10th, 1966. All right. And my mother always used to talk about this and throw it in my father's face. They got married at the reception. ABC Wild Wallace Sports came on and it was the live telecast of Muhammad Ali versus Carl Mildenberger from Germany. Sat right, right? Howard Cassell announced it. So my father, the entire reception, was watching in a back room where they were holding a reception on a black and white TV, the Ali Mildenberger fight. And my mother's like, people, people are here for us. What are you doing? And my father was drunk and like ah we already married fuck them (laughs) (laughs) Ali is fighting so yeah I (laughs) could oh oh man oh man I wish I wish there was video footage of that (laughs) oh that would have been amazing that would have been amazing (laughs) all right I think with that it's a good point to end things off on here 